In Excel 2010, when working with lists of records like the one we see here on the current worksheet, you'll find it quite easy now to convert your list into tables with just a few clicks of the mouse. And in doing so, you'll be able to add some great looking table formats as well as utilizing built-in tools provided by Excel after converting your list into a table. To begin the process of converting a list into a table, simply click a cell within your list of records and then from the Home tab of the Excel 2010 ribbon, over towards the right, click on the button labeled Format as Table. Here you'll have a number of different formats in which to choose from, formats that will be provided by the workbook's theme. So keep in mind that as you choose different design themes from the Page Layout tab, the table formats will change to reflect that of the current theme. For this particular example, I'm going to choose one of the color schemes available from the Medium category of Table Style Formatting. And with one single click, Excel will now verify the data range for me, which I will need to confirm before officially applying the table formatting. Here we can see that Excel has determined the range of my records within the list as starting in cell A1 and extending to cell I38, which is correct, so I'll go ahead and click OK to officially apply the table formatting to the list of records. And right away we can see the formatting now applied to the records once the list has been converted into a table as well as a Table Tools Design Ribbon now providing me with many other options for working with this table of records. Options which include other table styles, so if I were to click the drop down arrow to the right of the Table Styles Gallery, I could now choose other table styles from the one that I had previously selected when I began this exercise. You'll also notice a group of options here referred to as Table Style Options, which provides a series of checkboxes also available to me here on the Table Tools Design Ribbon is the group labeled Table Style Options, which is a series of checkbox related options that I can select to activate even more choices for my table formats, such as to format the first column within bold fonts, as well as the last column in bold fonts to have that data stand out. I can also deactivate the banded or shaded rows, perhaps instead to use the banded or shaded columns. You may also choose to activate a total row, which will automatically add a row to the bottom of the table where summary formulas can be used to calculate information within the table. For example, by default, the total row has automatically calculated a summation of the pay rate column in this particular list. However, what I'm going to do here is change that function from a sum function to the average function to instead see a calculation of the average pay rates. And to summarize information from other columns, simply click within the total row of the column you wish to summarize and then use functions provided by the drop down arrow to the right. Other options within the table formatting include the ability to summarize your table data with a pivot table. Or, should the table possibly contain duplicate records, you can remove the duplicates by using the Remove Duplicates command, a feature that is discussed later on in this Excel training series. On the far left of the Table Tools Design Ribbon, you'll also find the name of your table, which can be selected and edited to more specifically reference the information within your table, such as the name that I'm assigning now of Employee Data. By pressing the Enter key, the table now has been officially renamed EMP, or Employee Data. Now, one thing to note here is that when naming your tables, you cannot use spaces or other symbols other than the underscore character within your table names. And finally, one other feature you may have noticed here that has been added to the top row or the header row of my table are the drop down arrows providing me with the auto filter tools. Now, although auto filters are nothing new to Excel, here in Excel 2010, they have been improved upon to give you much more flexibility when filtering data from within your list. For example, let's assume that I need to see employees from one of three different departments referenced within this employee list. By clicking the drop down arrow to the right of the department field, I can activate the auto filter for the department field and then simply uncheck those departments that I do not want to see records for within the list. Furthermore, you can use the select all command to either select all values or deselect all values if you wish to take that route for selecting the records within the list. By clicking OK, we'll now see that I only have records pertaining to three different departments. And in fact, from the same drop down menu provided by the auto filtering to the right of the department field, I can choose to sort these records by the department code so we can now see the three different departments of records that I've asked for grouped together by AC, AT, and MF. Furthermore, 
you'll find that the auto filters provide many other flexible related filters, such as the ability to show values that are equal to, not equal to, greater than or equal to, less than or equal to, as well as many other options available from the auto filters of the formatted table. And to finish this particular exercise, I'll return to the drop-down arrow provided by the department label and then choose the option of clear filter from department to clear the criteria that I was utilizing to filter by department, thus returning all records to the employee data table.